My name is Lisa Holiday, and my business name is The Joyful Penguin. I'm an LLC. And right now, I just kind of focus on retail. I focus on making polymer clay jewelry, mostly earrings. Um, and then I make decoupage, oyster shell, trinket dishes, and ornaments. Okay, interesting. <laughs> um, tell me a little bit about how you kind of fell into this, how you got into doing all these different crafts. Sure. I've always been kind of artsy craftsy my entire life and in different stages of my life I've nurtured it or I've been away from it and um, I was a teacher and then in 2018 I stepped away from that and did some tutoring on the side and I had the time to actually maybe pay, make this a thing and I just kind of delved into into some crafts and things like that and I, um, I stumbled across these shells on the internet and I thought those are really cute. I could totally do that. So I actually went into town to King Street Oyster and I asked the manager, I'm like, it's going to sound strange, but can I take some shells home with me? He said, sure. And I kind of played with it and um, started making those. Not really sure what I was going to do with it. I used um, some of my own house. I gave some of these gifts. And then during COVID, um, Tierra Flynn at the Global Local had a um, workshop through, it was Harper Lee Designs. She's also local and she makes polymer clay jewelry. And she had a workshop and a friend and I went there and um, did that, had a lot of fun with it. And then I just kind of explored that more and more. And I was doing some other things at the time. I was making these wrap bracelets. I was experimenting with air dry clay. And one day- Air dry um, clay. Yeah, yeah, because I love pottery, mm -hmm. but I know it's quite an expensive thing to get into. I had no history with it. And I was just like, let me just see. So again, making small bowls and um, uh, magnets, like things like that. And after taking that workshop and seeing Tira's store, I had mentioned to her one day, um, apart from that day, I said, I would love to just sell things in here. And she goes, well, what do you make? And I told her I was kind of dabbling and she goes, well, bring it, I'll sell it. And I'm like, you don't even know me. And you're gonna like, <laughs> say yes to this you're thing like, that I'm doing. You know, <laughs> yeah, she was super sweet about it. So literally the next day I came in and showed her a couple of things. She's like, Okay, yeah, I'll take it. And I was like, what's going on here? You know, so she has been instrumental in helping me get the confidence to put my stuff out there. And believe me, it was terrible three years ago. I've improved quite a bit, but, um, and just kind of taking that chance on me and allowing me to do that. And it's just, um, it's just kind of taken off from there. So I've kind of narrowed it down to the shells. Okay. I, I'm, in complete transparency, I didn't think I'd still be making them. I thought it was this kitschy thing that would pass. But now you see them in a lot of places, and they're popular, and um, she keeps asking for them. I've now um, branched out to some other stores and still doing that, just trying to find some other creative ways to use them as well, like ornaments and um, some visual art things. But And then just... Uh, playing more with the jewelry as well because there's just so much you can do with that. So even though there's a lot of clay artists in the area, we all kind of have our own unique style. Yeah. So, but so tell me a little bit about you said at the beginning of all of this, you said that you were a teacher. Yes. Right. Yes. Uh, what did you used to teach? I taught elementary education, so primarily second and third grade, with a year in fifth grade. But okay. um, my husband. So you were very creative. And yes, and that allowed me to kind of work in that creativity, um, especially in the beginning of my career when it wasn't, because um, teaching is very different now than it was when I first started as far as the time you have to work in that kind of stuff. And you can still be creative mm -hmm. when teaching today, of course, but I just felt like I had more time to do those little art projects at the end of a unit yeah. or to work it in in a lesson. Um, so that kind of checked the box for me while I was teaching. Yeah. So, yeah. That's really cool. Now... Are you using those teaching skills that you've acquired over the last couple of years for any incorporating it into this new stuff that you're doing with the shells and the jewelry and all of this? I have. And Tira, once again, had encouraged me to start these workshops. So I do teach um, people how to do the decoupaging process with the shell. I've done some earring workshops, and honestly, I really enjoy the shells more. Um, and what is this process called? De decoupage? So okay. Decoupage. So it's like basically gluing. So tell us. A, I was going to say, tell me a little bit about the process, because yeah. I've never done it before, and I don't know if any of our listeners have done it before either, uh -huh. but like, what, what kind of all goes into sure. the process of I'm these shells? I <laughs> water before I start it. I feel my mouth getting sticky. Mm. 
so yeah, you can you can decoupage almost anything. And in some processes, it's transferring images onto something using um, what uh, Mod Podge, which is a, basically a crafter's glue. Yeah, best way I can summarize it. And it's, Mod it's the stuff they put over like painting sometimes, right? Or no? Um, I don't know if I'd use it for that, like to give mm. it like shine or gloss. Yeah. Um, there might be some people out there doing. I'm not. That's not my thing, so I'm not really <laughs> sure. <laughs> but there are things that people do to create. Um, when they either transfer on their image onto something or they're gluing this image onto something, they'll use it as a sealant. But for what I do with the shells is once I've prepped the shell, I'll paint it after it's clean, of course, paint it this nice white background because the shells are very different. So there's dark spots, there's light spots. And just to kind of keep it at even tone, I'll paint it um, with paint and then I'll put the image in there. So it's not this like stamping or anything like that. I put the actual image in there and then I seal it with the Mod Podge. So that whole process of using Mod Podge to kind of seal in that image is the best way I can explain decoupage. But there's yeah. other, there's many ways you can do that. So people decoupage images on birdhouses and vases and all that kind of stuff. So I just happen to do it on shells. Very interesting. So you just saw this somewhere and it was yeah. like, this is my inspiration. Yeah, it was like just something to get me started. Ultimately, okay. and the people, the people who know me have been hearing this for three years, I really want to get into drawing and painting again. So that's cool. what I started. Did you, when I was, was going to say, did you used to draw and paint? Yes. So when I was younger, that was my thing. And my parents saw that I was like above average. So they poured into that a little bit. I signed me up for like private art lessons. And then once I hit junior high, I grew up in New York, so and, and we didn't have a high school at the time. So mm -hmm. junior high was like seventh through ninth grade, and then we had a choice of a couple surrounding schools. So once seventh grade hit, because I was also playing sports, my parents said, you got to pick one. I have two siblings. They had their own interests and stuff like that. So I picked sports, and I don't regret it. I love sports. I love being part of a team. Yeah. I love that kind of community. Um, so art has been in and out of my life. Um, in different aspects. Uh, sometimes I had no time for it. Other times I would start, I've started a lot of things, let's say that, but um, never really had a chance to nurture it. And it wasn't until I stepped away from teaching um, that I had the time. So I still hope to get back to drawing and painting. I have all the supplies and all the time, I just don't have the time. So once, um, we'll see how far the shell stuff goes. I think the jewelry I can, I can play with for a while because that changes. Yeah. But I think maybe once the shells take up a lot of my time, um, the process, and because I supply different stores and I do my own markets, it takes up time. And I've, I've taken three years to kind of balance how I want that to play out in my life. Mm -hmm. So very interesting. Um, going back to the the process of the shells and all of this stuff and hosting these classes, um, what do you find most challenging um, about just the whole thing? business um i think just finding that balance because i don't need this business to put food on the table this is something that brings me joy this is something that um takes up my time I and mean, i've got plenty of other things too but it's like an, i i want to do this and I, I feel like i've been given this opportunity to do it i want to take advantage of it um so i think the hardest thing was trying to find that balance my first year i signed up for any and every event that someone would take me and i was completely burnt out in the end that made a nice little chunk of change but I'm like, it's not worth it. Every weekend I'm doing something. I'm not spending, my husband works full time during the week and then I'm on the weekends. And it's like, it's just the two of us and our dog. So I didn't like, we had no time together really. So I'm like, okay, let me scale back. Let me see what shows are actually beneficial for me. Um, and last, last year I did better, but this year I just did like two spring shows. I didn't do anything during the summer except um, supply the stores and had a couple orders. And and then I was like, okay, well, the fall and winter markets are usually tend to be better anyway. So I've got six of those. And I think I think I found a nice balance where I'm busy enough and I see the benefit of it. It's not work yet. It doesn't feel like work. It's it was still work. fun. It's still <laughs> fun, yeah. There's some parts of the process I don't like doing, but it just it comes with it. Um, but I think that was the hardest part for me and uh, knowing when to stop. Because I had actually, this year, I was like, there's um, painted tree markets were coming. There's yeah. been Sterling was running dollars. I, I signed up for one. And then all they did was brought me stress. And I was yeah. like, I can't balance this. It's just me. You have to know. Yeah. When stress to or should I stress for this? Is this? Yeah. Is, is it worth it? Right. And then I had signed up for this big show in Dulles. And I'm like, 
what am I doing? I'm, I'm going to rip my hair out and I haven't even started prepping for it. So I pulled out of both and I felt so good about it because I'm like, you know, no, I'm happy where I am. I love the community I'm a part of. I love the people I get to interact with and I'm content right now. So, nice. okay. Yeah. Well, flipping the coin a little bit, what do you find most rewarding about about being able to have your own business, about the stuff that, you know, these products that you provide? Mm -hmm. um, I, there's a couple of things. One, um, just being a part of this community, like I mentioned, it's very important to me because especially when I stopped teaching, I was Yeah, home. it's different. And just having a lot of conversations with the dog, you know, those kind of things. It's just, <laughs> I, just I wasn't a part of anything. So, um, And when did you say you stopped teaching? Uh, it was... The 2016, 2017 okay. year. Um, I did some tutoring and then I taught during COVID and then um, that was about it. So, yeah, and during COVID we were all home. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, that part's been nice. Uh, just meeting all the people, other vendors, other shop owners, um, other connections that people have made for me and just these friendships that have started. Um, I get to do something I like to do. I like working with my hands. I'm making some money on this side, which is fun because I've been able to pay for things on vacations that, you know, maybe weren't in the budget or, you know, didn't want to be extravagant with or things like that. So it's just been nice to be able to contribute to those kind of things and be able to do something I really enjoy. And then I have pretty much complete control over it. So if it's too much, I'll scale back. If I want more, I can add some more. So it's kind of nice having that working for yourself kind of feel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's very true. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit um, about what are you doing currently for marketing for your events or for just selling or having at the, or what shops are you currently at? I'm currently with uh, the Global Local here in town. Um, I'm also with Handmade. Um, uh, it's local makers and art, artists and crafters, LMAC. So they have, <laughs> it's a mouthful, but um, I they have a location in One Loudon and in Dulles Town Center. So I'm in both of those. And I recently branched out to Erin's Elderberries down in, um, I guess, Vint Hill would be the area. Have some family down that way. And I do have a couple friends who have stuff in that store. So um, I have a website that I kind of list these things on. I don't, I tried doing the selling on the website and it just, it was too much. And, and I'm going to be honest with you, just the, the idea of making reels every day and doing all that kind of stuff. I, I started, <laughs> You're not the TikToker. No, I'm not the TikToker. <laughs> You're not the dance girl. <laughs> no. <laughs> I love it. I love watching other people do it. It's just like, that's not me. And it's also, I try to branch out a little bit into some of it. Um, and it just, it's a lot of time. And energy and I know if I got used to it I'd probably get better at it but I just didn't want to kind of go down that road so um, I do post on Instagram I do have a Facebook um, business page so those are my main things and I'll you know um, at shows I'll have like a flyer to you know advertise future shows things like that so those are my main ways of advertising so I was I was looking at your Instagram earlier mm -hmm. I saw all the pictures of the shells. I was like, just by seeing this, it's okay. very like aesthetically pleasing and interesting to like. Oh, thank you. Just yeah. go through it and want to look at more and more of them. <laughs> so yeah. I like I like it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, can you tell me a little bit about maybe giving a another entrepreneur out there who? is deciding whether they really want to go full force into mm -hmm. a new venture. What kind of advice would you give somebody who's deciding, should I, mm -hmm. should I do this? Should I, maybe it's not, they think it's something that other people would never be interested in or, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. I would say to ignore that little voice in your head saying, um, it's not going to work. It's not worth the shot. It's people aren't going to like what you have to offer all those things because I fought those same voices and it took someone like Tira to get me to ignore them and just put myself out there like it's scary, you know, because I, I put these shells and these poorly made earrings at least in the beginning and I was worried about what other people would think. And I understand that like there's people who put out beautiful stuff and it's not for me. I wouldn't buy it, but I think it's beautiful. I can appreciate the craft, but to, to not let um, those fears 
get in the way and to just take risks, to find your people, find people who believe in you and support with you, whether it's family or friends or even other people in the, in the business. And, um, and just really, for me, community was so important. I found out about so many of these events and possibilities and stuff like that through other people. I, I, you can find things online, sure, but it's different when you get it word of mouth and you get people giving you advice like, well, don't do this one. It wasn't good. Or do this one. It was great. Or connect with this store owner. She's looking for more inventory. You know, those kind of things. So I would say um, just to kind of push through those fears and just give it a shot because you just never know. I had no idea I'd be where I am today when I first started. And now you're having a whole bunch of fun doing all having these fun. crafts. <laughs> I'm having fun. I'm earning pretty decent money for what I'm doing. And uh, yeah, yeah, and I've made a lot of Being friends. Being your own boss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, tell me a little bit about you outside of all of the fun crafts mm -hmm. and stuff. Who are you outside of the business mm -hmm. type? Um, do you like going out? Do you like, are you a foodie? Uh, oh, I like food. <laughs> I wouldn't consider myself a foodie, but I like food. I'm Italian, so I like food. But um, I would say a big part of my life is um, missions work. So um, I just recently came back from a trip from Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was the first trip I've taken in um, about six years. But before that, it was a huge part of my life. Um, it's a long story, but um, back in 2004, it was my first year teaching, actually. It was that December that the Asian tsunami hit, and um, my husband and I were like, we need to do something. You know, our church needs to do something. So uh, a couple months later, a small team, we were a part of that, went to Sri Lanka, and first time I left the country, <laughs> going to this horrible, devastated area, um, and we built, we helped build some homes, um, assisted with another crew with building women's, like, um, pregnancy ward, um, and after that trip, we're like, this is something that needs to be part of our life. And um, about a year later, my husband left his job as a police officer for Fairfax County, which he oh, loved, my God. and took over the um, uh, missions director position in our church. Um, wasn't something he was planning on doing right away, but the guy left the position. He's like, all right, this is my opportunity. So for those next few years, he built relationships with various different um, places, but our main focus was Nicaragua. And we travel back and forth for a while. I went with him as much as I could with the teacher schedule. I went during the summers and then about four years into it, I told him, I said, I, you're gone too much. I want to do this with you. We need to figure something out. So I left teaching the first time and we moved to Nicaragua and we, um, so we're how all, long were you in Nicaragua for? Well, that time we were only there for a couple months because we, uh, we were spending our time doing like language school and stuff like that. We actually had a trip to the Middle East during that summer doing another trip. And unfortunately, I, I was diagnosed with cancer that, sure. that summer. So we went home and spent about a year taking care of that. And then... Sorry to hear that. Oh, thank you. So but then we were like, okay, well, we're not going to move back again. But we continued to do stuff there. Um, and I'm condensing a very long story into short. <laughs> but um, at some point, my husband felt like it was time to leave his position. We moved to Arizona, again, a whole long story. I taught for a year out there. He was learning how to fly airplanes, which is always what I wanted to do. Started here in Leesburg, and he's like, we need to go somewhere where there's more consistent weather. I'm like, I'll go wherever. So we went to Arizona. And while we were there, he's like, I feel like we're supposed to go back to Nicaragua. And I said, okay. So we, we packed up our stuff, came back to Virginia, and then went to, uh, back to Nicaragua. At this time, apart from a church, so we had about, um, about 20 families supporting us financially to go. And those families were heavily invested in what we were doing there prior to anyway. Yeah. So they, um, they loved that we were going. They loved having the accountability down there. And we were there for about two and a half years. And while I was there, I taught English to, um, there was an orphanage on the property. And it was about 250 kids there. So I taught almost all of them. There was another American down there who took a year to teach at the actual school. So she taught all the littles because I couldn't understand their Spanish. My Spanish isn't wonderful. Um, but... I really enjoyed that because that was a lot of fun. I was teaching. Um, there's a lot of creativity I had to do for them just because of lack of resources and then just, you know, in general. Um, but then we came back after about two and a half years and we've been here. Um, we are at a new church in Leesburg and this is their first time doing a missions trip and we jumped on board and we loved it and we hope to go back in the spring. So That's amazing. Yeah, so I'm excited to be, have that aspect of my life back. That's awesome. I love hearing that. I love 
hearing that you followed your mm-hmm. what you feel like is your calling to mm-hmm. wherever it may drive you mm-hmm. and that's that's awesome yeah we've been blessed to have that kind of flexibility so to speak um we don't have kids um which people do it with kids but um it does obviously make it a little bit more challenging but yeah we've taken advantage of every opportunity we could and just try to make sure we're hearing the lord and what he wants us to do and try to be obedient to that yeah that's that's amazing i love hearing that um tell me a little bit about um i think we had a you have a little bit of a winter market coming up mm-hmm. for uh, an event that's that's yeah. coming up soon. I do. So the fall winter markets are um, kind of wears out for me. And this month I actually have two. So I've got Blue Mont Fair coming up on the 21st and 22nd. Okay. That's been a very good show for me. Um, love the coordinator, Kim Labash. She's just awesome. Where is it? It's in, um, it's the community center in Blue Mont. And it's that whole area. So there's arts, crafts, there's, um, there's food, there's uh, wine, beer. And then all these things that the community provides and offers. Um, it's a big event. So that's a lot of fun. I'll be in the barn. I always get in the barn because I don't have to deal with the tent. <laughs> <laughs> it can get hot in there, but I do like it. So that's coming up. Um, and then the following week, I'm at Aquaquan's uh, Fall Fest. That I haven't done before. So I'm excited about that one. And then I've got a couple in the, in the area. I've, I've, um, I do have a workshop coming up, though, um, at Penway Cidery in Bluemont. It's part of the whole dirt farm um, Bluemont Vineyards, like that whole family, mm-hmm. and I'm doing a workshop with the uh, Trinket Dishes there, and that is okay. October 27th, so I'm hoping to get some sign-ups for that, because um, I had one during the summer, and we had to cancel it just for, a, just it was just kind of the vibe all summer with people trying to do workshops, they just weren't getting people to sign up, but you know, people, people are busy, on vacation. yeah, <laughs> so you have fall, and it's fun, and you know, that kind of stuff, so I'm hoping to get a good time. And it dinner. involves the winery, yeah, brewery vibes. Right, almost always good. <laughs> the fall vibes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, awesome. So where can people sign up for this workshop? Um, it's on my website now. It's okay. at the joyfulpenguin.com. So you can go to the events page, but it's also on the main page. You can just click on the link. There you go, sign people. Up sign yeah, up. You have there. to go. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Is there anything that I haven't touched on or that we haven't touched on during this conversation that you would like to address say to the audience let everybody know i would just kind of like to circle back on the community thing and how much i love being a part of leesburg um we actually lived in leesburg before um on the other side of town when we were younger and um broke and you know just always wanted to live downtown and just you know it was just always out of our price range but we thought we moved around quite a bit ended up in leesburg twice and then coming back this last time from nicaragua um we were looking at building a house down in Haymarket, and then this house popped up in town, and he's like, he's like, do, you know, let's take a look at it because it was it was small. We had to add to it, but um, it's right off Market Street. We love it. It's not in town, in town, so it's not. It's super quiet where we are, but we love that we can. I walk every morning, not every morning, but I walk a lot in the mornings, and I can walk through town. So you could have literally market. walked here. I could have been here. <laughs> I could have been a little sweaty, but yeah, I could have walked here. Yeah, it would have taken about fifteen or eighteen minutes. And I just love it. And I love being a part of knowing some of the small businesses here and just the connections I've made. And um, again, with Tira, just introducing me to people. And I just, I've never had that before. Yeah. I've never had that community feel. And all the neighborhoods we've lived, never had that. You know, I kind of feel that same way about Leesburg because I never liked Leesburg, really. I, I grew up in, like, Sterling uh-huh. and, like, that area. Mm-hmm. So, for me, I was like, oh, Leesburg's too far. Yeah. But... I moved down here, what, like four years ago? Mm-hmm. And I live very close to downtown. Like, driving is like five minutes away. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I like the being able to walk yeah. around. and It's a great little town. And when we first, when we first lived here, there was not much going on down here. It was, just, yeah. it was mostly just the antique shops and whatnot. But it, we, when we moved back, we're like, wow. <laughs> this, is quite a bit. this is like a hop in place have you been to a first friday yet oh yeah yeah i have done um i did one um uh, it was still cold so it was one of the early ones i think it was in april where i just kind of had a like a table to demo what i was doing you know right underneath tuskies yeah so next to the um the office there the visit loudon so that was fun and then yeah i've 
we've come out plenty of times. But now that we live here and we it is busier on the weekends, so we kind of sneak in during the week. It just right. it's not as crowded. But, <laughs> but we encourage people to come because we love this town and we want to see it thrive. Awesome. Well, thank you very much um, for being here today. But for my last question, mm-hmm. I'm going to ask you, if you could leave our listeners um, with a message or some sort of mantra that you live by or anything like that, what would that be? I would say, and this is on my website, do more of what brings you joy. Have something in your life that you find joy in. Like we can get stuck in a rut with work and especially if it's not something we truly enjoy. Um, and I've been there. I've taken jobs and I'm like, I am getting nothing out of this other than the paycheck. And that's why I went into teaching. And for other reasons, I had to leave that. But, um, but yeah, just find that one thing that you can just find yourself in. and. Um, just get joy from it. I think it's important. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. It's very important to be happy. Mm-hmm. So yes. That's awesome. time to do so. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much for being here today. Thanks for having me. This has been fun.